I will be showing an example wherein we will go through the different phases of the program development life cycle. This is the automated teller machine. Later, we will be coding an automated solution. Please finish this video so you would learn how to do it from phase 1 up to phase for the problem definition, we will create a program that will accept the ATM card details. This is when the person will insert the card but will not enter any more the details. The card itself holds the input such as the account number, account name, account PIN, and account balance of the ATM card. Then afterwards, the program should also accept a PIN and this PIN should match the account PIN of the ATM card. And if it does not match, the user can re-enter the PIN. Take note that the account pin here and the pin is different. The account pin is the one that is stored and saved in the ATM card but the pin is the one you will enter to check whether it matches the account pin. And if it already matches, the account balance should be visible on screen for the user to know how much is left of his or her balance. The user can now enter the amount that he or she wishes to withdraw. The program should also consider that the amount should be less than or equal the account balance. So afterwards, the new balance should be displayed. For the problem analysis, once the user enters the card, the inputs would be the account number, account name, account PIN, and account balance. The user would also enter the PIN. This is to verify if the PIN entered matches with the account PIN. Also, the user would input the amount to be withdrawn. For the process, we will just refer to phase 1 which was discussed earlier. Then for the output, we will be displaying the original account balance which is the old account balance and the new meaning the amount to be withdrawn was already deducted. For the third phase, I have chosen the flowchart. We begin upon inserting the ATM card. We will capture the input's account number, account name, account PIN, and account balance. Afterwards, the program should ask the user to input the PIN. And the program should check whether the account PIN from the card is equal to the PIN which was entered by the user. And if it is false, the program should allow the user to re-enter the PIN. And once true, the program should display on screen the account balance. And by that, the user would know how much he or she could withdraw. The program should allow the user to input the amount to be withdrawn. Of course, the program should check whether the amount is less than or equal to the account balance because you cannot withdraw an amount that is larger than the account balance. If false, you go back to input amount until such time that the user would enter an amount less than the account balance. If true, there would be a process of deducting the original account balance less the amount to be withdrawn. And that would be the new value of the account balance. Once done with this process, the program should display account balance. So that ends the flowchart. Now let's proceed with phase 4, coding and debugging. I will be using code blocks as our editor and compiler at the same time. So we click on file, we click on new, let us save this as atmexample.c. First, we refer to the flowchart. So we have input, account number, account name, and account pin, and account balance. Let's take for example that we have a defined values for this. So let's start with include because we will be using the standard input output such as the printf and scanf. We have to include the, the library header where these functions are defined. We will be accepting the account number, account name, account pin, and account balance. Let us assign account number and account name as constants and also account pin. For example, that the user cannot change his or her pin. But of course, in reality, a user can do that. Also for the account name, especially if the user is is a female, once she gets married, she can update her account and her last name be changed. Let us define account number, assuming that it is already constant. We have there 7463822. 
Then we also define a constant account name, assuming that the owner of the account is a is a male, Jose de la Cruz. We make use of the double quote since this is a string. We also have assuming that the user cannot change the pin. Let's have one, two, three, four. For account balance, of course, we cannot make that as a constant. Rather, it would be a variable since it will change later on. Let us go to our main function and initialize account balance, assuming that the amount is 10,000. And what is the data type of account balance? We have float because this is a currency. This statement declares a variable called account balance with an initial amount of 10,000. And the data type is float. That is because it holds a fractional value, meaning it has decimal points. Then we go back to our flowchart, so assuming that these are already there in the program, but we, we just assume that we have a fixed details here. Next is input pin. Program should ask the user to enter pin. Then we will scan and we will store it in address pin. So pin is a pin is a variable. We have to declare the variable pin with the data type of int because it will hold or digit full numbers. After entering the pin, we have to check the existing account pin is equal to pin. So we have to check if account pin is equal to pin. And if this is false, you have to go back and enter your pin. So we, I will be using the do, the do while statement. So the user will do this statement while the condition is account pin is not equal to pin. So while this is true, you have to go through these statements. Every time we do our program, we could check by executing, for example, here, enter pin 1, 2, 3, 4, then done. Because the pin matches the account pin. But if it is 4, 3, 2, 1, see, you will have to type it until such time that you get the correct pin. We are okay with this part. So this is the decision part. Once it is true, you have to display the account balance, which is of type float. There, float. So meaning we have percent %f as its format specifier. Then comma, where would the value come from? From the account balance, which is as of the moment is 10,000. Let's try to run it again. 1, 2, 3, 4. It matches. You will notice the decimal places is up to 6 decimal places. So we could change that up to 2.2. So let's try it again. 1, 2, 3, 4. There. 10,000. We could also say balance. There. Balance is 10,000. We go back to the flowchart. After displaying the account balance, the program should ask the user to enter amount to withdraw. Then that would be stored. This would be a float because it is of currency value. It can contain two decimal places. So we have float. Then we store it in amount. We could declare more than one variables with the same type by just by simply adding a comma and then type the identifier name. So amount and account balance is of type float. So let's try. Every time we have a code, we could execute and run so we could see if there are errors immediately. If you will notice, I would like to have an enter, a new line here before the enter amount. There, so here, enter amount, I will have a new line. Enter amount to withdraw, for example, 3,000. Okay, but based on our flowchart, this is an on-page connector, so letter B, we go here. If amount is less than or equal to balance, if this is false, you go back to amount. So we will go back here, enter amount. We will do this again. We will do this again while amount is greater than, greater than account balance. 
For example, if the account balance is 10,000 and you are trying to withdraw 20,000, of course, that is not possible. So you have to re-enter the amount until such time that it is less than or equal to the account balance because you could withdraw all of the remaining account balance. So let's try to check again. Oops, there's an error. So this would be the partner of this. So the main function does not have a, have a partner anymore. So you have to put close curly brace for that. We still have an error. What is the error? So we could view it in the log. Expected while before semicolon. Oh, I see. We should put this here. There. So we enter the pin. The amount is ten thousand. I would try. I would like to withdraw twenty thousand. Oops. Enter amount to withdraw again. Five thousand. There. After entering the amount, we will have a process. The new account balance would be account balance minus amount. Then we will display. This is the new balance. But you. But we don't say new. It's just my way of saying that this one is the old while this one is the new account balance because the amount to withdraw was already deducted. I'm trying to withdraw 12,000. Oops, that cannot be. 11,000 cannot be. 20,000 cannot be. 2,000. There. Now, the balance would be 8,000 pesos because you have 10,000 less 2,000. You have the new balance, which is 8,000. We could also change this to account balance minus equals amount. There, 9,000. This is the shortcut of the... Account balance is equal to account balance minus amount. So we have account balance is equal to account balance minus amount. So that ends the flow chart. And this is the coding and debugging part. Initially, we have a problem and we tried to define it clearly in phase one then we analyzed in phase two what are the inputs process and output and in phase three we tried to design an algorithm uh, among the three options I, we have algorithms pseudo code and flowchart i chose flowchart and then for the last phase we have coding and debugging so along the way along the programming or the coding process we could fix errors if there are. So that ends the example of the automated teller machine.